let's play a game of zero-sum fantasy football. There are six positions to draft from in this game. We have two quarterbacks available, Brad Terry Shaw and Mike Brady. The number in the parentheses represents how many points each player will produce. Thus, Terry Shaw will produce 19 points and Brady will produce 17. The next position is running backs, with Sprinty Sanders producing 24 points and Pace Williams producing 22. The third position is wide receiver. Buddy Light produces 14 points and Ida Sinclair produces 11. The fourth position is tight end, where Barry Brutus will produce 13 points and Max Gluter will produce 8. The fifth position is kicker, where Pat Cathy will produce 10 points and Punt McGee will produce 3. And finally, we have defense, and there are two teams available here, the Ironers that produce 9 points and the Smelters that produce 3. Here is the puzzle. There are two drafters in this game of fantasy football, and the draft rules are as follows. Each drafter can only take one player from each position. It's going to be a snake draft, meaning that the draft order is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. In other words, having the first pick is balanced out by having the fourth pick, and so forth. After each drafter has taken one player from each position, we will total up the points scored by that team, and the drafter with the highest score will win. The puzzle for you is simple. Do you want the first or the second pick in this draft? While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today, as the title of this video implied, is that you are looking at a zero-sum game. Thus, whatever helps you hurts me, and vice versa. It's a topic I touch on in Chapter 3 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the answer? Let's talk about what I refer to as Level 1 versus Level 2 thinking in zero-sum games. Level 1 thinking places emphasis on scoring the most points. Thus, a Level 1 thinker will focus on drafting a quarterback or a running back. That's because quarterbacks and running backs put up way more points than any other position. And indeed, a Level 1 thinker would probably take Sprinty Sanders with the first pick. In contrast, Level 2 thinkers will place emphasis on maximizing point differential. That's because the goal in this game is not to score as many points as possible. It's simply to score more points than your opponent. Framed that way, rather than looking at the raw scores, let's look at the point differential between the two players from each position. The difference between Terry Shaw and Brady at quarterback, for example, is two points. It's also two points difference between Sanders and Williams at running back. The difference at all other positions is higher, with wide receiver being 3, tight end being 5, kicker being 7, and defense being 6. As a result, it is not Sprinty Sanders who's the most valuable player here. It's Pat Caffey. Taking him gives you 10 points, and eventually it forces your opponent to only get 3 points from Punt McGee. That gives you plus 7, and there is not a position that will give you a better point differential than that. Thus, whoever picks first should pick Pat Caffey. From there, we can just go down the list. The next pick should be the Ironers, to take advantage of the 6-point differential available on defense. And because this is a snake draft, that blue team will also have the third pick, and that should be reserved for Barry Brutus to take advantage of the five-point differential over at tight end. 
After that, it becomes the red team's pick again. And this time, they should go for a wide receiver and get the three-point differential at that position. That means picking Buddy Light. Perhaps surprisingly, the two positions with the highest raw numbers are actually the lowest priority because they have the lowest differential. And it turns out that between quarterback and running back, the next pick from red doesn't matter because the differential is two in either case. So we could say that the red team might pick Sprinty Sanders, and then the blue team would finish off the division of the first picks from each position with Brad Terry Shaw at quarterback. The remaining picks are academic because each drafter is limited to taking one person per position. As a consequence, the teams will fill out like this. And we can now sum up the final scores, which will be 76 for red and 77 for blue. Thus, the answer to the original question, would you rather draft first or second, now has a clear answer. You should draft second and secure a win by exactly one point. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.